Passenger Rail Service Brightline is on the clock. It's time for another episode of Bells and Whistles. Hello everyone, Bill Wilson, Editor-in-Chief of Railway Track and Structures Magazine, with a look at the top news stories we were following the week ending March 5th. The Purple Line Project Restart in Maryland is starting to gain some traction, as the list of design-build contractors has been shortened. Purple Line Transit Partners, the private investor of the project, says the choice for a new contractor is now down to three. Hallmar International, Maryland Transit Solutions, and Tudor Perini Lunda. The list was originally five contractors, and the request for proposals for the finalists will be issued in the coming weeks. The winner is expected to be selected in June, with the financial agreement completed in September. The Los Angeles County Metropolitan Transportation Authority announced that its first tunnel boring machine, named Elsie, has officially broken through to the Wilshire La Cienega subway station site in Beverly Hills. It is the first of two TBMs that will reach the last station on Section 1 of the Metro Purple Line Extension Project. Tunneling for the first four-mile section of the project is now two-thirds complete. More than 90% of the tunnels have been mined safely, and Metro anticipates completing tunnel mining this summer. The Maryland Department of Transportation Maryland Port Administration announced the release of the federally approved environmental assessment for the project to reconstruct the CSX-owned 126-year-old Howard Street Tunnel in Baltimore to allow for double-stacked intermodal container trains to and from the Port of Baltimore. The comment period for the environmental assessment began on March 1st and runs through March 30th. Following the public comment period, the project requires final National Environmental Policy Act approval before CSX can complete final engineering and obtain permits. Pending that approval, construction of the Howard Street Tunnel is expected to begin later this year. Brightline has until midsummer to come to terms with local and state governments that would allow the passenger rail service to extend service from Orlando to Tampa. According to Florida Transportation Authorities, this is the last chance for Brightline to make it happen. Brightline President and CEO Patrick Goddard signed the extension agreement on March 1st. The corridor the passenger rail wants has some issues, one of them dealing with the Central Florida Expressway Authority. Brightline needs the agency's permission to use space along the toll road system, and there needs to be an agreement on lost toll revenue compensation. Well, that's a look at the top news stories we were following the week ending March 5th. For the latest news, go to www.rtands.com. You can also find us on social media. We are on Facebook and Twitter. Have a great weekend, everyone.